Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Sona Hong. I'm a radiologist in Sejong General Hospital. In this session, I'd like to introduce the advanced cardiac CT scan for diagnosis and treatment planning in patients with pediatric congenital heart disease. Current generation MDCT scanners allow rapid coverage of large anatomic volumes, some millimeter isotropic spatial resolution, and temporal resolution as low as 66 milliseconds. The highest pitch scanners and volumetric scanners provide full anatomic coverage of a pediatric thorax in less than a second or a single heartbeat freezing respiratory motion. The radiation dose of non ECG synchronized spiral CT scan in young children is usually less than one millisievert. The indication of a CCT is as follows, complex cardiac malformations, detailed coronary artery imaging for quantification of ventricular function, central airway anatomy, visualization of stents, conduits, and closure devices, and patients with contraindication of MRI. Limitation of CCT includes poor myocardial tissue characterization, inability to quantify valve regurgitation, exposure to ionizing radiation, risk due to urinated contrast, and risk for anesthesia. Let's see the individual category of disease. The order of contents is like this. Septal defects, thoracic vasculature abnormalities, TOF, TJ, and Fontan procedure. For septal defects, CCT is rarely needed unless associated with systemic or pulmonary venous anomalies. CCT may be useful when echocardiography is not fully diagnostic. CCT may be considered prior to device placement in patients with large ASD who have poorly visualized inferior posterior limbs on echocardiography. CCT can serve as an alternative, particularly for RV volume overload and pulmonary venous connection. CCT may be useful to confirm the anatomy of unusual VSDs, such as inlet or apical defects that are seen by echocardiography. CCT is usually not necessary to diagnose a PDA. Imaging demonstration of morphological variations in size, shape, number of defects, and surrounding limbs of second ASD is important, particularly since the widespread use of transcatheter closure technique. A deficient rim of fossa valis and close proximity to the SVC, IVC, and coronary sinus may prevent successful closure. In general, a sufficient septal limb should surround and defect larger than 5 mm in all directions. Most ASDs with deficient withdrawal limbs are closed successfully by the ASO. An ASD with two or more deficient rims should not be closed with a device, as device embolization is highly expected in cases with significantly deficient posterior inferior rims. This diagram shows a superior rim, SVC rim, posterior rim, IVC rim, arterioventricular rim, and RT rim. This 3D intracavitary image shows a deficient superior and aorta rim, sufficient SVC, posterior, IVC, and artery or ventricular rim. This intracavitary image shows another terminology of four different rims surrounding the defect, anterior superior, posterior superior, posterior inferior, and anterior inferior rim. Another excess CT scan will demonstrate posterior rim deficiency, anterior superior rim deficiency, posterior superior, and posterior inferior rim deficiency. This is a 46-year-old female patient with second ASD. Using mean IP image, CT scan shows in face image of the defect. CT shows about 25 by 40 mm sized defect with deficient anterior superior and posterior rim. This defect was closed by 39 millimeter sized device. CT also has been used for evaluating complications after transcatheter closure of ASDs. It is able to show residual defects, device protrusions, or migration that are not seen on TTE. Mitral valve compression by large ASD device is one of the complications after transcatheter closure. In this patient, mitral valve erosion causes mitral valve perforation. The device was removed by exploration and mitral valve was repaired. 
Sleep delay disk into the right atrium is one of the complication. Follow-up CT scan shows a small resolution in the inferior portion. However, anterior and superior and posterior limb of the device was well anchored. The septum primum, which is the thin wall of the intra intraarterial septum develops first. Septum secundum, which is composed of muscular tissue, develops to the right side of the septum primum by forming a tunnel between the two arteria called the fossa valis. In the first months of life, the septum primum and secundum are fused. This is a 34-year-old female patient with CCTGA. Mal-aligned septum secundum and septum primum makes the device closure difficult. This is a septum secundum, and this is a septum primum, and the defect is a straightened PF4. After thorough pre-procedural planning using CT scan, device closure was successfully done. It is not uncommon to see a PVR with a secundum ASD. A clear demonstration of the abnormal anatomic pathway allows the surgeon either to patch or to baffle the pulmonary and cover pathways to the appropriate atrium without causing obstruction or permitting a residuation. PVR most commonly involves the anomalous drainage of the right upper pulmonary vein to the right atrium or SVC. This anomalous pulmonary drainage is frequently associated with a sinus venous ASD. This is a 45-year-old male patient with sinus venous defect and PPVR. Small right upper pulmonary vein drains into the mid SVC. A large right mid pulmonary vein drains into the left atrium with a defect of the partival between the pulmonary vein and lower SVC near the SVC RA junction. An anomalous pulmonary drainage was rerouted into the left atrium using baffle, and a partial defect was closed using baffle too. On left, anomalous pulmonary venous structures are less frequent than right anomalous pulmonary venous structure, and usually uh, drains into the left brachiocephalic vein via the vertical vein or into the coronary sinus. The next case is a nine-year-old girl with multiple muscular VSD. Swiss cheese type of multiple muscular VSD was diagnosed using CT scan prior to device placement. This is a 20-year-old female patient with muscular trabecular VSD. The defect size is about 5.3 by 12.5 millimeter. Device closure of the defect was done using a plot circle without evidence of leak. This is an LV sized morphology. However, moderate band compression by bulky LV disc was suspected on follow up CT and echo, and frequent PVC was caused by mechanical irritation. For thoracic vasculature abnormalities, CT is a clip for diagnosis of aortic obstruction, PA stenosis, PV anomaly, systemic venous anomaly, and stenosis, vascular rings, and slings. CCT has been shown to adequately diagnose congenital aortic anomaly, including interruption of aortic arch and coarctation of aorta. CCT is well established in the evaluation of PA stenosis for patients with TUF pulmonary atresia, post op PA stenosis, and Williams syndrome. CCT is a clip for demonstrating the site of anastomotic obstruction in the anomalous pulmonary venous return. Systemic venous anomaly and stenosis is well visualized by CCT. CCT may be considered for suspected vascular rings and slings to assess both vascular anomaly and associated tracheobronchial narrowing. This is a day old infant with large PMVSD and aortic arch hypoplasia with preductal coarctation of aorta. We can more precisely define the anatomy and size of the entire aorta. In coarctation aorta, CT can avoid diagnosed pitfalls of echocardiography resulting from geometric distortion caused by a large PDA. This is a one month old infant with interrupted aortic arch type B with sub aortic stenosis. 3D VR image shows long segment interruption of the aortic arch between left carotid artery and left subclavian artery. A severely hypoplastic ascending aorta and large PDA is also visualized. Posterior deviation of the infant fibular septum results in sub aortic stenosis. The next case is a 46-year-old male with hypertension. 3D VR image shows a short segment interruption of the ethmic arch. Numerous abundant collateral arteries bypass the interrupted aortic arch 
uh, via intercostal artery and internal mammary artery. Long collateral pathways was noted from bilateral subclavian artery, internal mammary artery, superior and inferior epigastric artery, and both common femoral artery. The patient was performed subclavian artery to descending aorta bypass graft. This is a 10-month-old boy with Williams syndrome. Our glass type of supravalve aortic stenosis and multifocal peripheral PA stenosis are typical finding of Williams syndrome, which were visualized by CCT. Echocardiography is the initial imaging technique of choice in the evaluation of PV anomalies. However, evaluation of PV may be suboptimal in some patients. Accurate diagnosis of TPVR and knowledge of the exact pattern of the pulmonary venous drain is uh, important to allow appropriate preoperative planning. This is a 21-day-old infant with a supracardiac type of TAPVR. A confront vein drains into the left vertical vein, left brachiocephalic vein, and then the SVC. This is a six-day-old infant with a supracardiac type of TAPVR. Confluent vein drains into the right vertical vein and then the posterior aspect of the SVC. Significant stenosis is noted at draining site of the posterior SVC. Permanent edema is also combined. This is a one-day-old infant with infracardiac type of TAPVR. Confluent pulmonary vein drains into the ductus venosus via the vertical vein with mild and significant narrowing of the ethmus. Total repair was done with confluent pulmonary vein to array anastomosis. After repair, uh, significant stenosis is noted at draining site of the pulmonary vein. Infracardiac type of TAPVR is almost always obstructive due to extrinsic compression of the diaphragm or pulmonary venous drainage via the hepatic sinusoids. The next case is a 20-day-old infant with mixed type of TAPVR. Accurate diagnosis of mixed type of TAPVR is difficult. TAPVR, supracardiac type of TAPVR of left superior pulmonary vein drains into the left brachiocephalic vein via the vertical vein. Right pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein drains into the coronary sinus. Second ASD is also noted at inferior portion. APVR from the right pulmonary vein and left pulmonary vein was routed into the left atrium via coronary sinus on looping. APVR from the left superior pulmonary vein was anastomosed to the LA appendix. The next case is a one-year-old boy with ischemic syndrome. Frontal chest graph shows vertically oriented scimitar vein in the hypoplastic right lung. 3D VR image shows scimitar vein which anomalously drains the pulmonary venous flow from the right lung into the IVC. On thin slab MIP means small brains from the right pulmonary artery is bridging the pulmonary artery which closes the midline to supply the ethmic lung tissue. CT is most useful imaging tool for demonstrating whole tissue lung and anomalous systemic arterial supply. This is a two-year-old boy with right aortic right arch with an aberrant left subclavian artery and diverticulum of cumulus. Small PDA connects the left subclavian artery and pulmonary artery to form a complete vascular ring. The esophagus as well as the trachea are complexed by aneurysm of the subclavian artery and the vascular ring. This is a one-month-old infant with a pulmonary artery sling. Aberrant origin of the left pulmonary artery is from the mid portion of the right pulmonary artery, partially encircling the distal trachea. Diffuse concentrating narrowing of the distal trachea suggests complete cartilaginous ring. The next topic is TOF. CT can evalu preoperatively evaluate L2 pulmonary collaterals or pulmonary arteries in the setting of pulmonary atresia or severe pulmonary stenosis and coronary arteries. In the early postoperative phase, CT should evaluate L2 pulmonary shunt, main and branch pulmonary arteries. In the late postoperative phase, CT can evaluate RVOT, pulmonary conduits, pulmonary arteries, coronary arteries, and aortic root. Preoperatively, CT can assess infant fibula stenosis, main and branch pulmonary artery stenosis, MAPCA, PDA, and coronary artery anomaly. Postoperatively, CT can evaluate residual or recurrent infant fibula stenosis, petitioned patency, RVOT aneurysm, and conduit stenosis. 
In patients with TUF with pulmonary atresia, CT has excellent accuracy in defining PDA and orthopulmonary collaterals in these patients prior to surgical unifocalization. TUF with absent pulmonary valve syndrome, which is the least common form of the TUF, often has a severe pulmonary artery dilation. And this dilation may cause bronchial compression, which can be visualized by CCT. After complete repair of TUF, CT assessment of ejection flexion and ventricular volume can provide comparable information for patients who are contraindicated for CMR. Precise anatomic definition is required for optimal valve sizing and successful transcatheter pulmonary valve placement. It is important to define coronary artery anatomy prior to surgery. Also, LT root dimension should be measured and reported in all TOF patients when a brassicity was performed. This is a 12-day-old infant with PVSD and MAPCA. The origin, size, number, and course of the MAPCA is precisely diagnosed by CCT. Anatomic details of the central primary arteries and various systemic arterial sources crucial for surgical planning of unifocalization can be delineated on CCT. Thanks to such CT roadmap of MAP cards, procedure time of cathet angiography and possibility of overlooked MAP cards can be substantially reduced. Conventional cathet angiography is necessary for identifying communications between pulmonary arterial feeders. After complete repair and division of PDA, also right interlobar pulmonary artery shows significant stenosis and one remaining MAPCA supply, right and left lung. We planned balloon angioplasty for pulmonary artery stenosis and MAPCA embolization after confirming communication. In pulmonary atresia, blood supply to right and left lung also can be provided by a large PDA. An atletic segment can be measured by CCT. After surgery, we can evaluate morphology and diameter of the pulmonary artery. This is a seven-day-old infant with absent pulmonary valve syndrome with a large PMVSD. Diffuse mild AOA narrowing was caused by aneurysmal dilatation of the pulmonary artery. This is a 20 Nine-year-old female patient with repaired TUF. CCT can assess volume and function of the ventricle, PVR size, stenosis, pulmonary artery size, retrosternal course of the coronary artery, and aortic root dilatation. Let's move on to the TGA. After arterial suites, CCT is able to visualize systemic and pulmonary venous baffles, identify baffle obstruction, and evaluate systemic RV size and function. After ASO operation, CCT performs well in the visualization of coronary OCI stenosis, neo PEM branch PA stenosis, neo ART root stenosis, and dilatation or insufficiency function. After Russell operation, CT evaluating country stenosis is important. CCTGA has a high rate of heart block and pacemaker insertion, and so as a relatively common indication for CCT. This is a 40-year-old female patient with complete TGA. She underwent palliative mustard operation in 1987. CT shows baffle classification and baffle leak was also suspected. This is a 21-year-old male patient with complete TGA. He underwent ASO with recompt maneuver. 3D VR image shows main and proximal branch PA stenosis due to overstretching by recompt maneuver. The implanted RCA shows interarterial course and significant stenosis is noted at RCAOs. This is a 22-year-old female patient with complete TGA who underwent Rastelli operation. 3D VR image shows diffuse conduit classifications and conduit stenosis was also suspected on NPR image and LVOT is slightly narrowed in this patient. This is an 80-year-old boy with CCTGA. He underwent double switch operation and cardiac pacemaker insertion for complete AV block. There is no intraarterial obstruction in the sending pathway. Mild LVOT, RVOT, and LP stenosis are combined. The final topic is single ventricular heart disease. While many patients with single ventricle anatomy can be missed, adequately using echocardiography prior to stage one surgery, CCT is occasionally necessary to define complex systemic or pulmonary venous, aortic or pulmonary artery anatomy. After stage one surgery, CCT can be used for evaluating systemic and pulmonary artery stenosis, shunt thrombosis, and as an alternate imaging modality for CMR. 
After stage two or stage three surgery, CT has been shown to adequately visualize all aspects of the gland or fontan circuit and to detect thrombus and pulmonary embolism. Hepatic evaluation by ultrasound and CT is important for fibrosis, cirrhosis, and cancer. Color coding 3D VR image can visualize diverse surgical techniques which patients are performed like arterial pulmonary fontan, lateral tunnel fontan, extra cardiac conduit fontan, and gasm operation. Due to increased survival rates with the use of advanced surgical techniques, long-term complications of fontan circulation are more commonly observed. Stenosis of the conduit usually occurs at the site of anastomosis which with the pulmonary artery and conduit problems include pseudo-intimal peel, thrombosis, calcification, or a small conduit relative to the physical growth of the patient. This is a 20-year-old female patient with a DRV who underwent ECC fontan operation. Late venous CT scan shows severe conduit stenosis caused by concentrated work calcification. Pulmonary embolism is a life-threatening thromboembolic complication of fontan circulation due to stasis and slow flow. High mortality from thromboembolic event is related to arrhythmia, particularly in arteriopulmonary fontan. This is a 15-year-old male patient with Chris cross heart who underwent ECC fontan operation. CT shows multifocal intraluminal filling defect in bilateral jugular vein and low density or thickening within the fontan conduit, which is suggestive of venous and conduit thrombosis. Although the etiology of PVM remains unclear, a symmetric distribution of hepatic venous blood to the pulmonary circulation appear to be a possible factor of the PVM. Heterotoxic patients who underwent Gawasim operation showed an increased incidence of PVM. In patients with palliative fontan procedure, development of APCs frequently observed due to arterial hypoxemia. APCs can be a source of life-threatening hemoptysis in close association with the bronchial artery dilatation, airway erosion, and rupture. Venous collaterals from the systemic vein to pulmonary vein are frequent as a consequence of elevated central venous pressure. Desaturation by erosion through venous collaterals may cause cyanosis. Chronically elevated systemic venous pressure associated with fontan circulation causes increased retrograde pressure in the hepatic sinusoids. This may lead to passive hepatic congestion, hepatic cirrhosis, and portal hypertension, which can be complicated by displacing nodules and HCC. This is a 20-year-old male patient who underwent a lateral tunnel fontan operation for DRV. Liver dynamic CT scan shows hyperdense nodule in the arterial phase, slightly hyperdense nodule in the portal venous phase, and ISO2 slightly hyperdense nodule in the delayed phase, which is suggestive of FNH-like nodule. Mild inhomogeneous reticular enhancement of the liver is seen in the portal venous phase, which means congestive hepatopathy. Thank you for your kind attention.